Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about the craziness going on with the college football playoff and some possible uh, strong arming by the SEC and the Big Ten. But now well, let's get into some breakout candidates for 2024. There is so much changing in the sport, so many transfers from here to there, and a lot of these guys here are transfers. So let's jump right in because tons of guys to get to, and we'll start with a couple of running backs in the SEC uh, or not in the SEC, excuse me, Roydell Williams, uh, Florida State uh, transfer from Alabama, used to be in the SEC. He was part of that group that came over to Florida State from Bama, felt like a ton of guys, which is never a bad idea to uh, get guys that previously played at Alabama. And Roydell Williams played a, a solid amount. I mean, a little over 500 yards a year ago, five yards a carry. So, if you compound the amount of carries he's getting, I mean, it, it, the sky is the limit in some ways for this guy. A very capable pass catcher in the backfield. Um, and I think one part of this that's huge for him is Alex Atkins had, does a great job with the run game. Obviously, he got a lot of help from uh, Jordan Travis during that season because he is a huge threat uh, to run the ball. DJ is... A little bit less of a running threat this year, but is still capable of doing read options and different stuff like that to at least keep the defense on their toes. Um, an uber talented guy was a little bit ba uh, buried at the depth chart at uh, Alabama. Um, did play a good amount against uh, or next to Jace McClellan, but throughout the season it felt like Justice Haynes and Jermarian Miller came on even more and. Um, he found a new place to play, which is uh, more power to him. I think this is a great fit for him. Um, stylistically, we saw what Trey Benson did a year ago, and he's totally capable of pulling that off the same way that Trey Benson did as Roy Dell Williams. So very excited to see this guy. And then when we know uh, for Florida State is they like big receivers. They like big guys on the outside that can make 50-50 catches. And that's a huge help to the run game because it just spreads out the defense, forces safeties to play a little bit deeper than they normally would. So those run lanes are probably going to be there as long as the offensive line is solid. If he can exploit those, I mean, I, I would be... Roydell Williams could be as great of a running back as there is in the ACC and in the country, really, because... Um, of his just overall ability to hit the hole as aggressively as possible. And then if he sees daylight, he can get gone pretty quickly. So excited to see what he can do at uh, Florida State this year. Another transfer, um, this guy came from North Texas up his way to South Carolina. Oscar Attaway III um, had over a uh, little over 700 rushing yards a year ago, but is an absolute bruiser. He is super experienced, has played a ton of football and runs just so hard. Uh, he's one of those guys that hops off the page because he plays football the way that, you know, uh, old school people love uh, football to be played. He is hard-nosed, he is uh, hard-working, and a guy that I'm really excited to see uh, at South Carolina. The one, you know, pause I do have about him being a full-on breakout star is that South Carolina O-line was not good last year. Uh, period, pretty much. I think they made Spencer Rattler look a lot worse than he really is, but um, overall, if that can improve even, you know, 30% or 40% from a year ago, especially in run blocking, this guy is going to at least uh, play a big part in their game. I think he will be a big goal line guy that will maybe get a ton of touchdowns this year, so He's going to be a huge part of that South Carolina offense because finishing in the red zone is a huge battle uh, when you're in the SEC and you have all these great defenses. But when you got a guy that can absolutely run over pretty much anyone, it helps a little bit. So excited to see what Oscar Attaway can do jumping up to the Power 5 level. Um, a guy that is stepping into some massive shoes over in Austin, Texas, is uh, Gunnar Helm, a tight end that was kind of stuck behind Jatavian Sanders. Now, uh, Sark loves to play 12 personnel. Um, for those who don't know, 12 personnel is one running back on the field and two tight ends. Um, so he loves to play two tight end sets and kind of play around with different um, 
you know, Steve Sarkeesian loves to mess around in the playbook as much as possible, and Gunnar Helm tended to take the role of a run-blocking, um, situational-type receiver uh, for the past couple of years but behind Jatavian Sanders, who obviously was remarkable in his time at Texas and is most likely the number two tight end in this draft behind Brock Bowers. Now Gunnar Helm is in that room. I, they did bring in Amari Nyblack from uh, Alabama, but I think that only helps him, uh, if I'm being totally honest. Amari Nyblack is kind of that wide receiver build. He will run more you know, deep crossing routes, routes that pull safeties and linebackers back a little bit, and then you have Gunnar Helm with just a little drag over the middle of the field or with a little curl. I think uh, when I look at this guy, I think he is going to be the third down uh, option for this team. They had Jordan Whittington the last couple of years that was the absolute go-to guy. Whenever you absolutely needed the play, you needed someone to make a big catch, he was the one they went to. I think it's going to be Gunnar Helm this year in a lot of ways because of his experience, because he is so smart in the way that he plays football, and because he's a good, he's a good blocker. So you can do fake blocks, then get him out in the flat. You can do fake blocks and then get a, a curl for five yards. There's a number of things they can do with him, and I think he's someone that could be right in the mix for one of the top tight ends in the draft because of his ability to run block and then hopefully in 2024, kind of break out as a receiver more so. Um, and then let's get to some receivers. Uh, we got three guys, um, all of which I believe are going into their sophomore season. Um, but we'll start in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Jalen Hale, uh, a dude that is just an incredible uh, athlete. One of those dudes that walks out onto the football field and just looks a little bit different than everyone else. Um, and with a guy like Jamarcus Shepard developing him, it could be a mean combo. Uh, he is a dude that is a massive deep threat. He just needs more reps, I think. I think his freshman year, um, it was a little bit tough to get on the field, right? You had Jermaine Burton, you had Isaiah Bond, you had all these guys that understood the system, were around for a little bit longer. Now it's, you know, there, there's tons of openings there. I mean, they did bring in Jeremy Bernard from Washington, which is going to be a huge help. But Jalen Hale is a huge deep threat for this team, and if we know anything about Jalen Milrow, he can sling the ball deep. Uh, that is where his comfort zone is, really, throwing the ball. So I think there is a couple of plays that Jalen Hale will make this year that is going to make people's jaw drop. And then he really is kind of a complete receiver. He's not just a deep threat. He is definitely capable of running pretty much every route. So I think if this Alabama team is going to be successful, there's a real reality where Jalen Hale is their leading receiver and kind of bursts on the scene in 2024. Um, but another guy uh, up at Ohio State, actually, is Carnell Tate. Um, people know who Emeka Ibuka is. People know Jeremiah Smith is coming in as the top-rated guy in this past class. This dude fits perfectly in, in all of these groups. I, he can do a ton of different things. Him and Emeka Ibuka um, do different things well, but they're both very complete receivers. Um, Carnell Tate's another guy that can get his deep balls when you absolutely need him to. So um, it's really one of those interesting things where as long as you can put the ball in his hands, as long as Will Howard can put the ball on him and let him be him, he's going to make plays. Uh and I think one of the big things for him is he's going to be more and more of a mismatch the more and more weight he adds because he is this long, um, relatively lanky figure, kind of a Justin Jefferson type build right now. But if he can fill out just a little bit more, whether it's like f even like 10 pounds, 5 pounds, 10 pounds, it doesn't have to be a lot. But just to make him more sturdy, he's going to be a nightmare on jump balls. So very excited to see what he can do um, this year. And then uh, Jaden Greathouse, a guy I talked about, I think, a couple of days ago when I was talking about Notre Dame. He's someone that they kind of need to break out. Um, there's a Florida, uh, there's kind of a gap in uh, that wide receiver room right now. Riley Leonard coming in helps him a ton because the dude is going to be accurate. He's going to get you the ball. The question is, can you make plays after the fact? And then having Mitchell Evans right next to him is just huge. Um, this is a guy that is going to take up a lot of defense's attention, going to take up a safety pretty much every play, and that opens the door for 
pretty much every receiver, but especially a guy like Jaden Greathouse that is so long, has the ability to be all the way on the outside and just want to go and straight up just beat someone, um, was super talented coming out of high school and just kind of played inconsistently to start the year. But I think he is more than capable of jumping onto the scene and possibly even being the Notre Dame's leading receiver uh, this upcoming year. And then finally, let's finish it off with a couple of quarterbacks. Some guys, one guy that I think a lot of people don't know, and then one guy that um, there are definitely some people that he has gotten on their radar. But we'll start with Aiden Childs, who is a transfer that came over from Oregon State to uh, Michigan State after Jonathan Smith took that, that job. And he should be the starter. Uh, that's the ex- expectation around East Lansing right now. And he's kind of a guy that reminds me of kind of uh, a Cam Ward sort of player, sort of a Jordan Travis type player. I need to see more of him throwing the ball um, to really get a good idea of who he is completely. But the dude can make plays with his feet. He can extend plays. He can make an, a, a not so great offensive line look really good. And in a you know conference like the Big Ten, you're going to need to do that every now and then because these defensive lines are absolutely mean. They're going to come after you all day. So he's going to have to make some plays out of thin air, and he's more than capable of doing that. He's one of those guys that I could not be more excited to watch play because while it might be hard his first year and maybe 2024 might not be the breakout year, I think he's more than capable of breaking out in 2024. But the reality is the dude ceiling is through the roof. Um, So whenever he does hit that, it's going to be incredible to watch, and I can't wait to see him just get more reps and get more time under center. And then finally, um, the guy that is leading the Kansas State uh, Wildcats this upcoming year, Avery Johnson. Uh, Now, Avery Johnson did kind of burst on the scene a little bit last year with Will Howard having some injury troubles. Uh, He played great in his time. I think he had a five-touchdown game a year ago and is an elite running rusher of the football, can play, you know, can do so many different things in that playbook because of that, and he is one of those guys that can absolutely still throw the ball. Um, now, it's not quite as polished as you would have liked, but this offseason is huge for him to kind of develop that, and um, Kansas State is right in the mix for the Big 12, right? There's teams coming over from the Pac-12, but... As of right now, as I see it, I think Kansas State is the team to beat. And obviously, um, that doesn't mean a whole lot here in uh, February. But um, I I really do think Kansas State will be right in the mix for the Big 12. And if they are, Avery Johnson will be right in the mix for a ton of different awards in that conference. So very excited to see him get a full season as the starter and it be the Avery Johnson show in Manhattan. Um, But we're going to take a short break here uh, before, or excuse me, after the break, we are going to talk about some guys that could get jobs as head coaches in the 2025 market. Now, some of these guys are already head coaches, but could get, you know, a bump up to uh, a bigger league or possibly should have already and haven't. But uh, we're going to take a short break and we will be right back. 